Yo, uh, hello, people. Uh, been a minute. It been, it been, it been a minute since we reacted to Wazi Entertainment. So the last time we reacted to them was like uh, two months ago. But we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. So look just straight to it and uh, sub up. Do have great things and the like go on this video. What y'all thinking? I'm gonna say thirty three. 33, but let's just straight to the video, man. Let's see what Wansy Entertainment talking about. <sighs> Seven horror stories. <laughs> this story happened when I was in the seventh grade. For reference, I was a very petite girl with long, dirty blonde hair, braces, and glasses. Okay. Anyway, in all middle school of my seventh grade year, in my science class, my friends and I were given assigned seats for a project that would be going on for about half, half a semester. Okay. I was paired at a table with two friends and a random boy. Let's call my friends Hannah and Allie. The boy, let's call him Liam, gave me bad Why he look like that? vibes right off the bat. Wait, let me he stop. had stringy, greasy hair, always wore one of the same two sweatshirts, and always gave me blank-faced, hostile glances. We all started talking, and I found out pretty quickly how Bro, probably cool, though. was. He would insult let me not judge. everything about all three of us. As middle school girls, we would shoot right back at him, although he never seemed offended at all, just amused. Time passed. And Liam got stranger and stranger. He would constantly hit me and my Oh no, he's walling. He's walling. Okay, he my friends and hitting all three of them. <laughs> and he's from the stabber. Oh yeah, he's a different breed. Hey, lock the schools up. Uh whoever his mom is. I I don't know. With pencils, so okay, he's a threat. He's a threat. So he was one of them type dudes in school. Uh I'ma pray for bro. I even though he's a fictional character. I'm gonna pray for bro, cause uh, this is kind of inhuman. So let's get straight to it, man. So violently, I would consider it stabbing. For some reason, we never thought of it as weird, seeing as everyone at my school was very physically aggressive, including us, because we would constantly hit each other playfully. But he always seemed to target me the most. I said next like to him you? in my social studies class too, and he would always call us best friends with a big grin on his face. Uh. He me the wrong. Bro, that is insane. If I, bro, look, God is tasting my, testing my patience right now. I'm going, okay, let me listen. But, bro, getting stabbed in your cheekbone with a pencil, bro, <laughs> let me restart. Let me restart. He always call us best friends with a big grin on his face. It always rubbed me. Bro, getting stabbed, though? Like, bro, don't, bro. Bro, you, y'all, bro, I'm a man of God now, but don't. Two years ago, if I got stabbed in the face, bro, with a pencil, hey, you might want to run away because this is insane. Like, you got straight scars. I know her cheek burned. Me the wrong way. Hannah and Allie would always laugh about his craziness, but Liam actually terrified I'm him. astonished. He went downhill even more when he wrote Kill Bailey in school in a black notebook. Both Hannah and Allie saw it, and it became a big joke that he put me on a one-person hit list. Even though it scared the crap out of me, I acted like it was funny since Liam seemed so nonchalant about it. What scared me even more was that I'm almost positive I saw a section right next to my name titled Plan. After that, he would always tell me how he was going to find my address and show up at my house in the middle of the night. Okay, yeah, uh, let's call the police. He would tell me about the guns he has at his house, and as usual, my friends just laughed it off. I don't know why... Come on, L friends. Whoever your friends is, get them gone. Get them gone now. If somebody telling me, yeah, I got an RPG waiting for you. Hey, I got an RPG waiting for you. And my friends just laughing. I didn't tell anyone else. I guess I didn't want to get mocked by everyone if it was all just a harmless joke. But one day, something happened that I will never forget. We were okay. working on the project I mentioned previously, which was a paper roller coaster. And Liam asked if he could go get a drink of water. After he left, I felt that I needed to go to the bathroom. I didn't want to at first because the water fountain was in between the boys and girls' bathroom, which meant Liam would be right there, but I couldn't hold it in any longer and asked to leave. As I walked down the hallway, I saw Liam standing at the water fountain, talking with another boy. He watched me rush down the hallway, never breaking eye contact. When I was in the bathroom, I had a sinking feeling the whole time I was there, like something in the back of my mind telling me to hurry up. So I complied with my instincts. When I threw open the restroom door, Liam was still there with the boy. I practically ran down the hallway to my class. I could feel his eyes on me as I waited for the classroom. I ain't gonna cap uh, Wednesday Entertainment. Y'all animation is getting better. I will say that. The animation is 
It's fire. I'm not even gonna count. Door to open. About a minute later, he walked into class and came straight to our table and leaned down next to me. And what he said will always chill me to the bone. You're lucky you left when you did. I just froze. I was in the bathroom alone, and Liam and that boy were the only two in the hallway. Was Liam planning on doing something when I was alone, but yes. the boy messed it up? I will never yes. know, because nothing like that happened again. He was still physically violent towards me, and when I mentioned the situation to my friends, they didn't take it seriously and joked about it, so I never brought it up again. The next year in 8th grade, Liam disappeared from school and never came back. It was like he never existed. None of his friends ever mentioned him or where he went. The only time his name is brought up is when we make jokes about him, like, Oh, that loud thunk outside must be Liam coming back. Or, I bet that yell in the hallway was Liam. He became an inside joke for anything creepy or Bro, they trolling too much. Honestly, I don't know if I was just paranoid and he was just a stupid boy trying to mess with No, uh, thank God that nothing happened to you. Because, bro, bro was definitely tweaking. But I genuinely think that he wanted me dead. So, let's hope I never meet Liam again. A hearty, hefty breakfast. And when you finish, you know you had some to eat. Bro, come on, bro. All right, now, that little five-minute craft music. Uh, the river. I still don't know what that thing was. All I know is that it was a very horrifying and terrible creature. I sometimes feel like it's still living there where I saw it, or that it's watching me, and my whole body trembles just thinking about it. The incident happened about 10 years ago now. At that time, I really liked riding my bike, so I would always ride my bike to the river in the neighborhood. But okay. that day, the river was moving very violently. Something was strange. The wind wasn't even blowing like usual. I stopped my bike, stood still, and looked out at the river. The river continued to sway violently as if there was something very large swimming in the water. I slowly approached, squinting and staring at the river. At that moment, I saw something I would never be able to forget. What I could see something round in the water, slowly rising to the surface. And they're At still first, walking. I thought it was a human head. Think about it. This man saw that and is still walking directly to the pond. Who is swimming in this dirty river? I thought to myself. But when I looked closely, it wasn't a human head. It was the head of a creature with a frightening appearance, with bug-like eyes, an unrecognizable nose, and a large and grotesque mouth filled with numerous teeth. And as soon Bro, what? Yeah, no. I, I know what type of story this is going to be. Let's skip. I, I know what type of story. And when I wake up at night, all I can think of is that creature crawling from the river to drag me back there with it. The classic horror story. My name is Jaslyn, and this happened when I was about 9 or 10, so okay, this was years ago, as now I'm in my last year of middle school. It was a normal day in my house. It was me, my mom, my dad, she and my tall. brothers. I was helping my mom clean the house because she asked me to. And while cleaning, my mom told me to put my folded clothes that were on the couch into my drawer, which was in my family's closet. I took my clothes and started walking to the room to get to the closet. But while I was walking to the closet, I was stopped in my tracks. What I saw didn't exactly creep me out at the time. It just kind of shocked me. What, what I saw it? was a dark grayish figure standing- What is that? Uh, uh that's definitely a figure. ...in the closet, reaching for a skirt that was high up. It was like you could see through it, but at the same time, it looked dark and human-like. It looked back at me as I looked behind me. It disappeared into thin air and dropped the skirt it was trying to get from the high shelf. I picked up the skirt and held it up and tried talking to the figure I saw, saying things like, Come back and take the skirt, and I... No, do not do that. I promise not to tell anyone I saw you. But it didn't appear again. And then my mom called for me. I ran back into the kitchen, and my mom said, Who are you talking to? I responded saying, The ghost. My mom looked like she didn't believe me, until I told her the whole story. And she looked uneasy for a second. Fast forward to sixth grade, when I brought up the ghost to my mom again. This time, she said, Don't talk about ghosts. I'm really scared of them. She then told me she was scared of ghosts because where she is from, people like to do black magic on other people and that you can yeah, I even that. feel the spirits that died on the island. I, I asked her, what if it's grandma? 
But she then said, no. It can't be grandma. I told grandma if she passed to never come to me because she knows I'm scared of ghosts. But if it wasn't my grandma, then who was the ghost I saw? A demon. That was Hi, it? My name is Sabrina, and this story occurred when I was only nine years old. A few years ago, my family and I got a new house from a very strange person. Let's call him Bob to protect his identity. Okay. He was a very racist old white man, like 87 or so years old. But my mom is white and blonde, so he was fine selling the house to her. His unusual behavior began once he saw the rest of my family. My sisters, my stepdad, and I are all Mexican. And he clearly didn't like that, so he tried to kick- Shout out my Hispanics in the chat, hold on. Kick us out, but ended up failing. But his creepy behavior didn't stop there. Around two months later, something disturbing happened. Back then, I was sleeping in my eldest sister's room, and one day, my sister and I were changing clothing, and our window was open. We lived pretty far away from the next house, so okay. we figured it was fine to leave it open. But what we didn't think about is that Bob's house was right across the street. We thought he was at home and wouldn't be walking around outside our house. But when we were done changing, we went to close the window and we saw Bob out. Yeah, I, I don't know what type of 4K. This is just straight. This brother is starving. This brother, I, I can't. I'm not even going to put it in words, but this brother is starving. Outside with a big camera. He was facing our window and we got really creeped out. But it turns out he did that almost every time we changed. I almost remember one night when I This man is trying to get freaky. Please, uh, what's wrong with old heads, bro? It be old heads on Amigo. Just going crazy. Like I remember me, bro. Middle school me, I used to be on the monkey app. I used to see an Indian dude straight stroking it. Okay, I'm woke up at exactly I'm sorry, y'all. Okay, I'm getting out of character. Okay, I'm sorry. But that's literally the truth. Like, I don't know why old people and it be I'm just being honest. I'm getting sidetracked, but people be wilding on Amigo. So monkey, that's why I stopped getting on that. That it's so it's too lustful. I had I had to get out there. Like Far away pause, from the next pause house. though. Hey yo, so we I figured ain't, it was fine to leave that's it. That's the truth though. But what we didn't think about is that Bob's house was right across the street. We thought he was at home and wouldn't be walking around outside our house. But when we were done changing, we went to close the window and we saw Bob outside with a big Stop camera. Stop real though, bro, they be wilding. Y'all know what I'm talking about too. got really creeped out. But it turns out, he did that almost every time we changed. I almost remember one night when I woke up at exactly 3.33 and looked out of our window and I saw Bob watching us sleep. A few months bro, after that what? night, I was in the car with my mom and she said, I don't know how you feel about him, but Bob died. And I was shocked, very shocked. She then said oh, he had a heart attack and was found this morning by his worker, Doug. I was super relieved that he wouldn't bother us anymore. But the story doesn't end there. A week after he died, I started to feel his presence around my house and unexplainable stuff has happened ever since. First, our fridge stopped working, even though we had just recently bought it. And then we went on vacation for a week. But when we came back, our house was completely trashed. Like you couldn't even see the floor and there were rats and roaches everywhere. Ugh. We lived in the desert part of Southern California, so there were desert rats, but this was on a different level. Anyway, after that, we moved That's away. That's a thing, a desert rat? 14, but I can still feel his presence nearly everywhere I go. Nah, that brother is starving. This video just took a whole turn. Like, what is going on? My name is Michaela. I'm a straight-A student in my freshman year of high school who used to struggle in math in the past. Because of that, my mom hired a math teacher to help us. Okay. His name was Mr. Emmanuel. He was really chill as a math Emmanuel. teacher and was very helpful when it came to math homework. Because of his help, I had math and didn't have any problems. But because my younger brother and I really liked him, my mom decided to continue to hire him as a teacher. Okay. Every Friday and Saturday, he always comes to teach us. My brother starts first on Friday. You're kind of clean though, okay? Starts first on Saturdays. But sometimes he will come very late, like around 6 p.m. I can tell he is always tired, but he still manages to be a really nice teacher. But that was until this one day that I will never forget. It was a Friday, and we had just come back from school. My okay. brother was starting first, so he got his math books out and got himself prepared for when Mr. Emmanuel gets there. After taking a shower and changing into my comfy clothes, I decided to do my homework from school at around 8.30 p.m. The math teacher didn't come yet. Strange, I thought. I figured that he was in traffic and we would have to do a late night lesson again. But even after 7 p.m., he still did not arrive. 
My brother was going to look from the balcony, since it was facing the street. Our security lights were on, so my brother could see clearly, but what my brother saw apparently shocked him. I was confused about why my brother looked so pale, until I walked over and he pointed at the house gate. My heart froze. It was my math teacher. He was covered in blood and there were bruises all over Bro, his body. His what neck just was happened? twisted and blood was coming from his eyes. His whole body looked burnt and he was staring right at us. At first, we didn't know what to do until he just started waving at us with a large smile. His smile reached from ear to ear. I screamed so loudly that my whole neighborhood heard it. Hearing me, my mom rushed to the balcony, wondering what was going on. I pointed to where my math teacher was, but when I did, he disappeared. My mom oh, no. just thought we were imagining things and told both of us to go inside. We didn't have math lessons that day, but the very next day, my mom got a call from the administrator for my math teacher, who used to work for my mom. We learned that he had died in a brutal car accident. Even weeks later, I still saw him at school anytime I was in math class. I will never forget Mr. Emmanuel. Bro, what are these stories, bro? Hello. I'm leaving it at that. These stories are like, they go zero to 100. Back to zero to 50 to, I don't know. We're going to leave it at that though. Wadzi, y'all tough, bro. I always appreciate these horror stories. Just thank you so much, man. Hey, whoever whoever runs this, you be putting in pain and you've been doing it for a very long time. So, hey, shout out to you. But besides that, hey, see y'all boys later, man. Y'all stay smooth. A key guy in your life, man. Y'all stay in your word. Y'all stay prayed up. Yeah, man, I'm going to see y'all in my prayers. Keep y'all in my prayers. Yeah. I'm out, man. Uh, just let me know how y'all feel about this. I don't know. It it was interesting.